Good morning, I'm Gary. I'm the rector of the Kit Group of Parishes and you're welcome to our worship on the second Sunday before Lent. Gillian has asked me to announce that the youth and the kids Zoom parties on Tuesday and Thursday afternoon are for all our children and young people regardless of the church they belong to. If you send Gillian a message, then she will private you the details for those Zoom parties. The rest of our announcements are after our service, or if you want to watch them again, at the beginning of the service. Today, we break bread together and we pray for God's Holy Spirit to fall on us and to minister his healing. And so we wait upon the Lord. And as we wait upon God this morning, we remember that this is a place of safety. This is a time of comfort. Here and now, the God who created the universe waits to embrace us. Here and now, we come to feel God's healing touch again. And so we pray together with all that we are. With all that we are, Parts that are whole and parts that are broken. Parts that are well and parts that are sick. Parts that are joyful and parts that are in pain. With all that we are, we come to worship you, O God. For you are gracious, merciful and kind. And we long to find our rest in you. Amen. We join together in singing from thanks and praise, my Jesus, my Saviour, Lord, there is none like you, for he is our comfort, our shelter, our tower of refuge and strength.
there is nothing that compares to the promises that we have in God. And that's why we can have confidence as we come before him now and we acknowledge our shortcomings and failures. So let us pray and open our lives to God's searching gaze. We pray together, God of mercy. God of mercy and compassion, we acknowledge that we are not all that we would like to be. We carry wounds and regrets, some of which are of our own design and some of which we have received from others. We acknowledge our feelings, our bitterness and our hatreds and ask you to heal us. Of all our sin, forgive us, O God. In all our weakness, strengthen us, O God. From all our diseases, heal us, O God. Amen. We pray together the collect for the second Sunday before Lent. Almighty God. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and you have made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things now and forever. Amen. Sylvia and Natalie are going to read for us this morning from Psalm 104. Then we're going to sing our children's hymn, Our God is a Great Big God, and you probably would like to do the actions at home. It's good to get some exercise during lockdown, and, and what better way to exercise and to worship God at the same time? And then Bethan, my daughter, is going to do our children's talk, assisted by our grandchildren, Bonnie and Bryony. Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of their wind. He makes wind his messengers flames of fire, his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with watery depths as a garment. The waters stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys, to the place you assigned for them. You set the boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate. Wine that gladdens human hearts oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, the stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats, the crags are a refuge for the hyricks. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labor until evening. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you make them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number. 
living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan which you form to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth, and it trembles, who touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. song i absolutely love that song it's one of those songs that immediately makes me smile it feels good doesn't it you know when we talk about joy when we choose to have joy when we ask for god to fill us with his joy our joy becomes contagious now contagious is quite a big word and you might be saying beth but i don't know what contagious means or maybe you do know what contagious means because we are all kind of living through a pandemic of something that is really contagious. Contagious means something that passes really, really easily. And you know, some people would even say that joy is contagious. That would mean if we see somebody with a huge grin on our face or their face, we automatically smile and we mirror that what they're giving us. When we see that joy, or that laughter, it's contagious. And you still may be like, meh, don't get you Beth in. So I have a video that I'm gonna show you. So watch and see. We 
laughing at that video. I know I did. I find that video hilarious. If I'm in a room with somebody laughing, that just cracks me off. I remember I was maybe 15 and we were down at New Wine and my friend and I started giggling and then it turned into that we were giggling because she was giggling and then we were giggling but we didn't even know what we were giggling anymore and half an hour we're sitting there out of breath still giggling with huge grins on our face because it was just so contagious and that's what we've seen in that video one person laughed and it set everybody else off it shows us how contagious joy really can be did you see that when one person started laughing everybody else followed it started with one and then it just passed it passed and passed and passed until everybody was laughing some people may have been like, eh, what's going on? I don't like this. But they were laughing. They were giggling at what a weirdo that person was. The joy was amazing. Would you like to have joy like that in your life? I would like to have that joy in my life. Are we a person that people become joyful around? Or somebody who makes some people sad? Are we a people who smile or are we a people who moan? Do people ever get fed up around you? Sometimes. In today's story, we are going to be looking at that joy. And we're going to be looking at two people in particular who were so full of joy when they met Jesus. When these two people met Jesus, their lives changed. They met Jesus as a baby. And they were still full of joy. They didn't know everything that was to come. They didn't know everything that we knew. And they were filled with joy, hope and comfort that God would do everything that he said that he would. And you know today that joy is still there for us. We can be filled with that joy. And the best thing is we know the end to the story. We know what happens. But we can be filled with that joy. But are we? Are we filled with that joy? Not always. It could be easy to forget. But God, Jesus, is amazing news. He died on the cross for us. He came back. He wants to be our friend. What's better than that? That is a reason to be happy. To have a smile on your face. And to have that joy that is contagious. And I hope and I pray that we are like that. Jesus is good news. And that is a reason to be happy. Thank you, girls. It always brings me joy to see you. Uh, and it's difficult not seeing our loved ones uh, during lockdown. Tamla O'Crilly Choir are now going to sing What a Wonderful World.
dare say many of you uh, sat at home smiling and singing along to those words, what a wonderful world, just like we sung, our God is a great big God. They bring a joy into our lives. Louis Armstrong sung that song back in 1967, the year I was born. I wonder, was he singing it because I had been born? Or simply a response, almost a prayer of thanksgiving to the beauty of creation. He paints such a vivid picture as you listen to those words. And, and there is something that catches us and makes us want to, to sing along. This morning, uh, Sylvia and Natalie read for us from Psalm 104. Uh, Sylvia texted me and said, all of it. Uh, thank you uh, for reading all of it. But towards the end of Psalm 104, we read the words in verse 33. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise God as long as I have my being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let's pray. And God our Father, we thank you this morning for this wonderful world. Open our eyes to see you and the beauty of your creation. Open our ears to hear you. Open our hearts to receive you. Open our lives to praise you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes we look out at the world and it's far from wonderful. Sometimes we're filled with worries and doubts. And I wonder, who do you turn to when you worry? Where do you go to when you worry? It reminds me of a man who couldn't sleep because he constantly worried that there was someone under his bed. Maybe he had the same babysitter I had when I was little. A neighbour of ours called Jane used to tell me that there was a bogey man under the bed and I would never get out of bed and come downstairs. This man was, was so worried he decided to go and see a psychiatrist and explains his, his problem to the psychiatrist. And like a good psychiatrist, he says to the man, I can help you, but it'll take six sessions and it'll cost £30 a session. And the man thinks to himself and he says to the psychiatrist, can I think about it? So off he goes and the psychiatrist hears nothing from the man again until one day he's walking down the street and he sees the man and he, and he says to him, you didn't come back. And the man who had been worried said, there was no need to. A friend cured me and he did it for nothing. How did he do it? asked the psychiatrist. He simply told me to cut the legs of the bed, replied the man. Problem solved. No worry. Wouldn't it be good if all our problems were solved so simply? Wouldn't it be good if we didn't have to worry? When we turn to the Bible, we read time and time again those words, not to worry. Now, I wish it was so easy. I have a confession to make this morning. I worry. And this pandemic, it certainly hasn't helped. I worry about my health. I worry about my family. I worry about my mum. I worry about the future. I worry about what the world is going to, to look like. And if I'm honest, I'm probably in good company this morning. Because I dare say you worry as well. Now, now don't get me wrong. I love the Lord. I trust in the Lord. I place my life in, in his hands. But there's just that wee part of me that still continues to worry. Now, this psalm that was read for us this morning offers us a pathway through worry towards peace. How? 
by encouraging us to focus of, on God and his works in creation. The psalm reminds us that God provides for every aspect of our lives, the big things and the small things. I want to say that again. The psalm reminds us that the Lord provides for every aspect of our lives, the big things and the small things. In fact, isn't that what the psalmist said when he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not need. Now, when I read the psalm, it doesn't address those worries about my health. It, it doesn't mention anything about my family. But it does have implications about my life here on earth. It has implications for all of us and our worries. This morning we, we sung those songs, My Jesus, my Saviour, there is none like you. You're our shelter, our tower of strength, our refuge. In a few moments' time we're going to sing, How great thou art, O God, how great thou art. And aren't those the words the psalmist echoes at the beginning of this psalm? Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You, have, you are clothed with splendour and majesty. Our God is great. But why is God great? Why do we sing, how great thou art? Well, we're told it in verse 5. In verse 5 we read, He set the earth on its foundations, it can never be moved. And again in verse 7 through to 9, But at your rebuke the waters fled, at the sound of your thunder they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains, they went down into the valleys, to the place you assigned for them. You assigned a boundary they cannot cross. Our God is great because he created the earth. Our God is great because he directs the water. Our God is great because he cares for his creation. Not only did God create the earth, but that he is intimately involved in every aspect of his creation. In verse 14, we are told he makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth fruit, food from the earth. Wine that gladdens the human hearts, oil that makes their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The high trees belong to the Lord. The birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the herax. Now, if you're like me, you probably wondered what a herax is. And it's just a small rock rabbit. In fact, our God cares so much that he's provided for the cattle. He's also provided for us as humans. He's given us bread and he's given us wine. He's provided for the birds of the air and the small animals that seek refuge in, in the rocks. And that's a theme that our Lord takes up centuries later when he's talking to the crowds on the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew 6, remember Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is it not more worth more than food? The body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap. They do not store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? 
and do not worry about clothes. See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you not that not even Solomon in his splendour was dressed like one of them. Is that not how God clothes the, the flowers of the field, which is here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow? Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first, seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. For each day has enough trouble of its own. And Jesus reminds us, doesn't I, that God cares for the very birds of the air. Do they worry about their next meal? No. Jesus said God provides for them. And what about the wildflowers? Do they worry about their clothes? Well, Jesus says no, that they are more beautifully adorned than, than King Solomon. The psalmist reminds us that our God cares personally for the birds, for the plants, for each and every one of you, and for everyone that has been born and is yet to be born. The psalmist was able to grasp that towards the end of the psalm when he says, I will sing to the Lord for all my life. I will sing to God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. It's only as we realise how great our God is, how wonderful his provision is, how much he cares for us, that our worries begin to actually turn towards praise. When I sing those songs, our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands and I get caught up in the chorus and singing the actions. You know, my worries cease and I begin to look at God who is much bigger than any of my worries. When I sing what a beautiful world, when I see the colours of the rainbow, when I see people walking by, I am reminded that our God has provided abundantly for each and every one of us and Jesus says don't worry if I care for the birds if I care for the flowers I care for you also but with this uh, with this With this promise of provision, there comes a word of command. And the word of command says, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and then all these other things will be added unto you. I don't know about you, but I seek the things of earth first, usually. I want this and I want that and I want this and I want that and then I worry about what I don't have and I worry about what can happen and then I turn to God. Perhaps if I turn to God and I seek his kingdom and his righteousness more then I will worry less because I have the things that I, I need. You know, Jesus says, seek his kingdom and his righteousness and God will provide for us. It does mean that life will still be difficult. It doesn't mean that life is going to be a bed of roses. It still means that we may face trouble. And that's the reality that, that Jesus talks about in John 16 and verse 33. When he says, I have told you these things so that in me 
you may have peace. In this world, you may have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. And I believe that's words that, that Jesus wants us to hear today. No matter what we're experiencing or, or what you're going through. I want to encourage you to pick up your Bible. To turn to, to the Psalms. Even the psalm we, we just shared this morning. And allow God to remind you of all his promises. His care. His provision. And allow him to turn your worries into praise. Our God is good. And when we praise him for who he really is then we begin to experience his peace deep within us. Keep praising, keep seeking his kingdom and know that peace that only Jesus can give. In John 14 and verse 27, we read those words of Jesus. My peace I give you, my peace I leave you. I do not give as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And so this morning, look out into God's beautiful, wonderful world. See the marvellous works of his hands. See the provision that God has given. See his concern for even the smallest of creatures. Praise him for who he is. And allow him to transform our worries through praise into peace. Let's pray. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And so Lord, we offer you our worries and our concerns. And pray that we would know your peace. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to respond as we sing that wonderful hymn. O oh Lord my God, when I an awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand has made. And we, we consider all those things when we consider what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Our response is to sing, How Great Thou Art. Sings my 
take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee We just sung those amazing words, how great thou art. And now we're going to affirm our faith in God. We believe in God, the creator of all that we see and all that we do not see. We believe in Jesus Christ. God became flesh. In death, he became the forgiver of sinners and in rising the healing of the broken. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God within us, the Comforter, the one who strengthens us and the one who is our friend. Let us pray. As we pray, the response to the words, Lord, hear us, or in your mercy, heal us, O God. Come to us again, O God. Fill our prayers with power and our hearts with faith. We pray for every place in our world where the wounds of war have left their mark. We pray for those areas throughout the world where there's trouble and strife, where people live in fear. Lord, hear us. In your mercy, heal us. O God. We pray for every scar of hatred that remains in our own nation. We bring before God the, the tension that still remains within our own province. Those old hatreds, the suspicion and the fear. Lord, hear us. In your mercy, heal us, O God. We pray for every person who is sick in body, mind or spirit. We remember those who live in fear because of the coronavirus. Those who are living, suffering as a result of contracting that virus. Those with cancer those who are troubled in body, mind or spirit. We remember the doctors and the nurses, our essential workers who continually battle against this pandemic. Lord, hear us. In your mercy, heal us, O God. 
we pray for all who work for the healing of the world. Lord, hear us. In your mercy, heal us, O God. Let your healing flow among us and within us. For Christ's sake. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And if you are there with someone today, turn round and share Christ's peace with them. And if you are alone, know that God's peace is with you. We continue as we make this wonderful declaration of faith. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father Almighty and ever-living God at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forevermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed are you, Father, the creator and the sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and your mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. There he made the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted it and in his Holy Gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them saying, Drink this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this cup and this bread, we do as your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension and we look forward to his coming again in power and glory. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat these holy gifts, grant by the power of your life-giving Holy Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of your body and blood, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We pray together the words which Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. And so as we celebrate communion, so we take a piece of bread if you have it at home. And that little piece of bread is a reminder of God's love for you. Of how God's son, Jesus' body, was broken on the cross. That through receiving him, we may know God's peace and life. And so we partake in the spiritual communion as we share together in the bread. And if you have a cup, you might like to take that as well. Because that cup is a reminder of the painful death that Christ died on the cross and how his side was pierced. And that blood is a reminder that it is by his stripes we find healing and peace. So drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you. And let us pray in silence. And let us pray for ourselves as we bring before God our brokenness and those parts of our lives that need to experience God's healing, God's forgiveness, God's peace, and that restoration of joy and life. The Gospel reminds us that Jesus came to seek the lost, to heal the sick, to free the captive and restore the broken. We give thanks for his unfailing love. We pray together. Lord God, who makes all things new, we thank you for coming to us, becoming one of us, carrying our shame and our pain and opening the way to life. We lift our hearts to honour you and to give you thanks. Amen. As part of his work of healing, Jesus left us this meal to remind us of his love, to invite us into his grace and to extend to us his renewal. And so we respond to that wonderful invitation as we sing, crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Song. Awake my soul
Let us pray. And God, we thank you that you have fed us with your life, embraced us with your love, touched us with your healing, and filled us with your spirit. Amen. And so touched by your grace, we take your grace to the world. Healed by your love, we take your love to the world. Renewed by your Spirit, we go in the Spirit's power to be agents of your healing. We pray for one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. Have a good week. God bless.